Today's video calls for your favorite cake pan. I'm going to show you this super simple hack slash magic trick to bake a flat cake that's perfect for making layers to stack cakes on top of one another or to decorate a super nice looking flat cake or to bake just to admire its flatness. So with that said, let's get started. Today we're going to make a cake recipe that will give us three layers of cake, which is perfect because I have three cake pans. Isn't that just nifty? We'll keep one pan as a control with no cake strips. The next one will have a homemade cake strip and the last one will use a pre-made fabric cake strip. There are a few ways and tricks of baking a flat cake, but I'll just show you a few today. You can make your own homemade cake strip instead of buying them, which is the first method I'll show you how to do. You'll grab your cake pan and a roll of paper towels. Wrap around the cake pan with a roll of paper towels to see how many you need. It'll overlap a little, which is totally fine. I need three to wrap fully around the eight inch cake pan I'm using. Once you have the proper amount, grab a bowl or a large cup of warm water and then fully submerge the paper towels in the water. I recommend you stack or layer the paper towels on top of one another by folding them at the seams where it comes apart before you put them in the water. Once your paper towels are completely wet, you want to wring them out. You want them to be fairly wet, but not soaking wet somewhere in the happy medium area. Now comes the hardest part is trying to get them unstuck from one another without tearing them. If you do accidentally tear them it's not that big of a deal. If you layered them like I did they seem easier to get apart instead of trying to unfold a crumpled up ball of wet paper towels. Now that you have them unstuck from one another lay it out completely flat on top of your work surface. Fold it from side to side long ways a couple of times until your paper towels are about two inches in width. After you've done that, grab a piece of tin foil that gives you about two inches on either side that is free. Next, throw your paper towel on top of the tin foil and start to fold it from side to side the long way. You're basically wrapping the wet paper towel in the tin foil. This will help trap the moisture the paper towel holds while it's in the oven. You can achieve the same thing by using old kitchen towels instead of the paper towels. Now you should have a long strip of tin foil. Once you have that made, grab your cake pan and wrap your homemade cake strip around the pan. You can lay your pan sideways to do this or you can lay it flat upside down and wrap it. After it's wrapped around, you want to crimp both ends together to make a complete circle to help hold the foil strip together and to help it stay in place. Fold the edges of the foil on the underside of the pan. Once you've done that, push the pan down pretty hard on your work surface to make sure it lays Flat. The next and probably the best method is using a fabric cake strip. These things are pretty dang sweet. You can make them fit any sized pan and you can reuse them a unlimited amount of times. All right, that's enough of an infomercial for these things. Repeat the same process as we did before. Fill a holding device with some warm water. Fully submerge the fabric cake strip. I found it helps to weigh it down so that it stays fully submerged and doesn't float up to the top. Soak it for around 10 to 15 minutes to ensure it's wet all the way through. After the 15 minute timer is up, pull the strip out of the water and give it a good old squeezer. Bring out a decent amount of the water like before, we want it to be damp but not dripping wet. Grab your cake pan and adjust the cake strip to the correct size to fit the pan you're using. For whatever reason, I find it easier to flip the pan upside down to get it to fit. You want the strip to be super tight and snug on the pan to ensure it doesn't fall off during the baking process. Even though we have achieved the perfect fit with our cake strips, we need to take them off so we can prep our pans for baking later. There are a few ways to prep your pans to help ensure cake doesn't doesn't stick. This is my favorite way of doing so. I'll coat each pan the same way to keep everything fair and square. I buttered all of them and then lightly dusted each one with flour. Now we can start making the cake batter. Not going to go into too much detail on how to make this specific cake recipe that I'm making because the methods I'm going to show you will work for pretty much any cake recipe. With that said, every cake recipe is slightly different so certain recipes will give you a super flat cake while 
others will still have a slight dome to them even though you are using the techniques in this video. I'm glad I made this video because I definitely learned a lot but at the same time it was quite a bit of a nightmare actually. It took me five or six times to make this video. I honestly lost count on how many times it actually is. So I'm going to go over the mistakes I made with the addition to the magical cake tricks. This way you don't have to cry in your pillow at night like I did. The first mistake I made was not measuring the correct amount of ingredients. I used way too much sugar and not nearly enough flour. It's a super rookie mistake but it does happen. If you want the most accurate measurements invest into a kitchen scale especially when it comes to baking since it's basically a science project every time you bake something. A pro tip when it comes to making any cake it's imperative you don't over mix the batter. Over mixing will create gluten which in turn will give you a denser and tougher cake. The second mistake I made while filming this was that I thought I was being cool and I put all of my cake pans on the same rack in the oven. I totally forgot that my oven racks have a slight lip on the back of them that goes upwards and I pushed a pan back too far which made the pan uneven so the cake batter was higher on one side giving me a lopsided cake keep everything even and fair in the experiment. I needed to ensure each pan had the same amount of batter in it. The best method of doing this is to use a kitchen scale. You would weigh out just the batter itself and then divide it by however many cake pans you'll be using. It's best practice to get the correct weights without the cake strips on the pans. Talking about cake pans so much leads me to the third mistake. I made a cake recipe that was meant for six inch pans and by mistake I baked them in an eight inch pan instead. Of course they baked but they didn't look that great. They were short and came out looking like frisbees. Just remember to not overlook the small details when it comes to making recipes. Here's a quick explanation of why cakes dome in the first place. During the baking process the edge of the cake will bake and set faster than the center will. Reason being is the edges are more exposed to the heat source whereas the center is surrounded by batter so it'll take longer for the heat to reach it. During the long baking process the edge will set fairly quick so the energy source known as the heat will slowly continue to bake the center causing it to rise which will create the dome. This is where the cake strips come in handy to help prevent the domage from occurring. The strips will act as a barrier between the pan and the heat. With the cake strips being wet, it will also keep the edges of the pan cooler, preventing it from becoming too hot and setting the edges too fast. Once you have all the batter evenly spread out across your pans, throw the cake strips back on the pans. Ensure the strips are on tight. Give it the lift test to see if they fall off or not. Once you've done all that, toss them suckers in the oven box to bake. You may need to bake them a few minutes longer than the recipe calls for, just because the strips are slightly cooling the pan down. The best ways to check and see if your cakes are done is to lightly press on the cake in the middle. If it springs back, you know it's done. Or you can also tell when they're done because the edges of the cake will start to slowly pull away from the pan. You'll want to leave the cakes in the pan to allow them to cool and completely set up before you move them to a wire rack to completely cool all the way down. A little fun fact I learned is if the cakes and the pan are still warm, don't take the cake out and put it back in the pan. If you do so, the cake will end up sticking to the pan and you will tear off the first little layer, which will give you an ugly looking cake, but of course you can always cover that up with some frosting. With that said, you want to ensure your cake is completely cooled down before you frost it because if you don't, your frosting will just melt off the cake and you'll have this gigantic mess that nobody wants to deal with. You can definitely tell the difference between the three cakes and which had the strips and which one didn't. I baked mine a touch too long so they got a little darker than they should have so yours will be lighter in color. Nonetheless, they still tasted great and we accomplished the goal of baking a flat cake. Share some of your fails or some of your favorite baking tips in the comments down below. It's always great to have everybody learn from one another, especially me because I'm not a strong baker. Experiment with some other flat cake tricks or just stick with the tried and true cake strip method. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy the baking process. All right, now that our cakes are done, let's give them the old looky-loo. Can you tell right off the bat which one's which? You can definitely tell there's a huge difference in between all of them. So this first one is our control. And if you squint and close one eye and you look hard enough, you can see that slight little dome on top, which is gonna be a pain when you go to try to make multiple layers. And if you try to decorate it, it's gonna look slightly ugly. 
but nonetheless it looks super tasty and of course you can use it even though it has that dome or you can take a knife and try to cut it off which is more of a pain than the outside of it got a nice hard caramelization so it's a bit darker in color which means it's gonna be a little bit tougher so it's not gonna be as soft which is fine but you want a super soft cake of course now let's check out the one with our homemade cake strip you can definitely tell the difference it's flat it's hard because I'm trying to hold it up but the outside doesn't have as dark of a color because it didn't get as hard of a caramelization on it so it's gonna be super soft and it'll be ultra soft all the way through definitely looks good and then the one with the fabric cake strip again it has that lighter color to it so it's gonna be ultra ultra soft all the way through and it's super flat which is perfect for decorating and stacking more cake layers on top yeah cake strips are pretty sweet so it's cool I think cake strips are the bee's knees and they're definitely worth the investment especially if you're somebody that bakes a lot or bakes a lot of cakes they're worth it I bought the knockoff version I didn't buy the name brand ones and they were fairly cheap and just a good investment because you'll have them for a really long time or if you don't want to spend the money you can make your own I'm sure there's some video or tutorial out there on how to do it yourself so hopefully you enjoyed today's video thanks for watching and I don't want these cakes so I think I'm gonna go make some flyers and post them all over the place to try to get rid of these things it's a lot more work than just eating them but uh, yeah we'll see you on the next one too long so the car carler color definitely do what they're supposed to do and and uh, things are really sweet really 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 <laughs> Which one is which? The stupid fridge.